Hey, it's Lyle Convoy. I think you knew that when you clicked on this video, though. Specifically because of the topic. I know the artists haven't really had any long-form content from the channel for a while, and I'm sorry for that. Stuff I'll be doing going forward may rarely be drama-related, but more long-form content is planned for the future. I appreciate the patience. Now, I need you artists to look up from your tablets. Please look at the screen. There's going to be some things mentioned in this call that are unpleasant and related to something that happened to me that may trigger others. While I'm sure this will reach a larger audience than the Lumi call where I had to reveal this to the public, I feel it's important to leave that ugly detail in, in order to drive home how absolutely vile some of the arguments Jar made in this video were. And that's who this call is with today. Anyone who knows my actions in the commentary community knows I regularly went to bat for Jar. I was there to give him advice, I mitigated and mediated conflicts he had with other creators, among other things in relation to his actions on this platform. I did this because I honestly thought Jar was just severely socially awkward, and I thought he could be better in multiple ways if he just had a decent guide from someone that actually cared. Jar's made it public that he grew up in a very strange household. He was homeschooled all of his life, and his mother was a younger creationist, with thoughts that didn't line up with reality, whether it be scientific or biblical. I've known a lot of people that struggled like that growing up, so I assumed I understood Jar in a way a lot of others didn't. So I tried to help him learn to socialize better, to resolve conflicts through talking instead of video hit pieces on people. It's pretty obvious to the general landscape of this community that my behavior hasn't been all that good either. And while being on medication and continuing to try to find a therapist has helped me tremendously, it doesn't excuse any of my actions. Or the damage I've done to people that didn't deserve it. I've been trying to show people as much grace as possible until they prove they're just abusing it. This is a standard I've always had with my friends, but I'm now trying to apply it to everyone. This brings me back to Jar. Despite what people may think, I haven't spoken to Jar in several months. Even though I thought he was a friend, he never really checked in on me, or asked how I was doing during my drama or much after. His only attempt to reach out recently was to ask me questions for a video he planned on making about me. I've gotten to the point in looking at my own actions and how I've handled things that not everything has to be a public call or dealt with using unneeded venom, so I was content with the fact that I realized Jar wasn't actually a friend. I was just someone he used to stop others from calling him out on his bad behavior. That's why a lot of his more recent content has been more unwell. I'm the person that told him not to do random videos on smaller channels that did videos on him he didn't like. I'm the person that told him not to defend people that weren't worth it. And I'm the person that told him to stick to his media reviews instead of mixing it up with people and giving in to his anger. The reason he's been acting the way he has on his channel recently is because he decided that my advice that's helped him in the past wasn't valid anymore. This is not an excuse for his actions at all, only to explain why he's done what he has recently. This is entirely his fault, and he alone holds the blame for that. Once I saw his video on Cine and how he acted in a stream with the user Chud Logic, I felt the right thing to do was to confront him on his actions in this case to highlight his overall problems. Before that video came out, I was content with letting what I thought was a friendship just fall off, and let him eventually trip over himself and run afoul of a larger creator that won't be charitable to him. But his most recent video was just... too awful. If it was received well, it could have done severe, lasting damage in the long run to a lot of people. I'm glad it got picked to pieces. Having spent several months looking at things in a removed manner, Jar's actions don't come off any more like isolated events but instead paint a larger and uglier picture. I want to be clear, though, that I'm not here to join in on a content bandwagon. I'm not here to do a bunch of videos exposing Jar. I wasn't even planning initially on publishing this call until Beckett and a few other people whose perspectives and experience have proven trustworthy have told me I probably should. I need to note that this call is edited. There's a couple of people that Jar blames for his push to make a video on me that don't need or deserved to be dragged into this, and a couple of other things that are just a bit personal. Sorry for the long intro, but I felt it was important. Here's the call. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, Jar. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. And uh, just so you know... Oh, wait, can you say something? I'm right here. Okay, got it. Okay. Um, Just so you know, I'm also recording on my end. So, if your recording doesn't work, just ask me and I'll send you my, my recording. Alright. So, I want to be clear about a few things here. Could, could I say something first, if yes. that's alright? I, I know I fucked up. If anyone else did this, I would make fun of them. I just... 
didn't expect my video to get leaked and uh, like that, and I panicked and upload an early draft, and I, I, I really fucked up, and I had a talk with another YouTuber, and he went over everything I missed in the doc, and I realized so much stuff I missed. Uh, he has the full call recorded, but yeah, he, he went through everything with me in the doc, and I was like, oh my god, I, I fucked up so badly, and what? I'm gonna have to apologize for this. Here's the problem. My question to you is, the final draft you were going to put out, the final video, was it close enough to what you put out? If people gave me, like, no pushback and said, yeah, this looks like a solid video, and me and my roommate uh, didn't decide to look at the doc in detail, which we were planning to, but if we didn't, which I'm pretty sure we would have, but if that didn't happen, yes, that would have been it, but... I can send you the old version, like the very first draft, which was all negatively about Cine, and you can just see how much I changed it. I said in my video that I was going to get a draft ready before I talked to Jack in case Jack freaked out, and that was very stupid of me to do. So, I want to be very clear here. I'm not going to, if I can help it, raise my voice at you. This is not going to be a call where I sit here and I scream at you like you're Zakalo. I'm not going to do that for two reasons. Number one, that's behavior I am trying to not repeat. And secondly, I am sick, and I don't even know if I could. So, okay. I am, however, going to lay down some very concerning things I have noticed. I am going to talk at length about some of your actions and some of your patterns of behavior here. But before we get too in-depth in that, let's go ahead and talk about your video on Cine. You, Jar, it takes a lot for me to actually be disgusted with the video angry sure i'm the angry guy your video actually made me uncomfortable for the things you said the conversations you had and the defenses you put up so let me be as blunt as i can with you jar since now this has been made public thanks to whoever leaked it to cast warfox of all cretans really jar no i'm talking about the call i had with lumi where i had to talk about something i never wanted to talk about publicly so, Jar, um, you said in there that there's no way Cinny could have groomed Inno because Cinny is a straight woman attracted to men and Inno's a girl. My grandfather was straight too, Jar. Didn't stop him. Didn't stop him with me. Didn't stop him with my uncles. Didn't stop him with God knows who else who will never in this mortal world get justice for what happened to them. I didn't know that. Well, unfortunately... Uh, several thousands of people do now because I had to put that out. I didn't want to, but I had to, and I did tell you, Jar. I told you in a voice message on my on my mobile alt that that happened to me. I remember you saying it happened to you. I didn't remember it being your grandfather. It was my and grandfather. I didn't remember you saying. My... You made it very clear in your conversations with Cindy that you did not come at this from an objective standpoint. I'm going to tell you exactly what I saw in that call. Now we could, we could, I could sit here and I could go point by point how absolutely disgusting and vile that video was. First of all, you knew better for all of this. And the reason why I know you knew better, Jar, is because you meticulously went through the set the programmer stuff. Because you were, and I quote, worried Lyo would be angry if you didn't. You didn't do that here. You barely even looked at the doc. You should have known better because you've done better. If you had been some bumbling moron who always screws things up and has never once showed an iota of ability to properly grasp things and run through this, we wouldn't be having this conversation right now. But I know you can do better, so I'm not happy on that end, too. But what actually irritates me the most, Jar, other than your absolute gross negligence, and that is honestly what it is, is how you were talking to Cindy in that call. You did not approach that call with objectivity. You did not have a list of questions to ask them to ascertain whether or not they were being honest with you. What you saw was somebody who you could possibly ask a favor for in the future if you were able to clear them. And if, even if you deny it, Jar, uh, that's just what I'm seeing here. And you made it pretty obvious. That's unacceptable. And frankly, that's, that's really gross. I know for a fact, because we've talked about it, you're terrified that these ACC people are going to come after you. So let me be very clear. Jar, the only thing the ACC people want from you because I do still talk to some of them, 
They just want you to leave them alone and not interact with them. If one or two come at you some ways, fine, respond, I don't care. But this idea that there's some sort of conspiracy about you? No. And even if there was, Jar, I have told you multiple times. Let them take the first punch, respond if you need to. You trying to assemble essentially an army of people who owe you favors is number one, uh, any alliance built on hatred is a weak one. And secondly, you are putting a lot of faith in people you barely know. And I also am aware that you are currently running to other smaller YouTubers about this. Jar, do you realize, like, in any objective manner, how absolutely ridiculous that makes you look? Yes. What I saw uh, on Chud's stream, Jar, wasn't just you putting your foot in your mouth. You essentially committed a form of f***ing on that stream. I know. So, there are people who do want to talk to you, Jar. And at least one of them I think you owe some form of conversation with. So let's go ahead and drop all pretense here. Whether or not you have a conversation with people should not be predicated on their sub count, should not be predicated on any of that. It should be based on how honest and open you're going to be. You have any idea how many people have come at me about Rosa that had no channels that I still talk to because I screwed up there and I am still owed that accountability to the people who come at me regardless of their intentions? And am, does that mean I'm going to hop on every live stream? No. There are people I'm not going to entertain. But average people, always, forever, until the day I die, I will have to answer for that. And I'm fine with that. I've made my bed, I'll lay in it. But what you are continuing to do is unhinged, Jar. And let me, let me go ahead and make this very clear. And I'm going to do this without mentioning names, because they don't deserve to be dragged into this. When I mm -hmm. told one of the bigger ArtCC people that you had a complete meltdown on Chud's stream, and you were a laughing stock, their first thing wasn't, ha, serves him right, or, well... Too bad for Jar. It was, oh my god, is he okay? Oh. Yeah. Look, I'm, oh. not, I'm not gonna put I'm not gonna put all the blame on you for some of the, the more conspiratorial things even I started believing. That's also partly Peaches and the nonsense they pulled, and also partly me. I still owe and earn and all that other stuff. My actions are still my actions regardless of who influenced me. Period. End of I know. story. But you, Jar, have made an absolute mockery of your platform multiple times. This is just the newest one and the biggest one. So I, unfortunately, had the displeasure of going through your Susie video today. Because I had it beforehand. Because I've had people tell me it was in there and I wanted to make sure I knew. So I'm going to tell you what I saw in that video, Jar. I saw you dancing on the grave of somebody who, with the exception of voicing in a video, which you and her resolved between yourselves... Dancing on the grave of somebody who had been nothing but kind to you. The problem, well, they also leaked the call we had, and then that's when I have two who people. Did who, leak it to? who did they leak it to? Who they leak it to? I will have to check my DMs, but the, I think it was like people who, like Lin Lin and Harley and people who don't like me. I don't know so, if Harley's heard it. I know Lin Lin did, and I did. I don't think Harley did. And that doesn't matter if Harley did or not. You two squashed the beef. That was the important aspect of it, Jar. I'm sorry, but I... that was. And and here's the more disgusting thing. Two things that actually make me mad. One, 90% mm -hmm. of your video on Susie is about the diaper stuff that, number one, happened mostly when they were a minor. Two, a fetish is something that you observe term, in terms of what sexually turns you on. Assassination, a hyperfixation, especially for an autistic person like you, Jar is not indicative of a fetish. And you made that entire video about how she's a lol cow and how you love being in this community because you feast on the autism. Welcome to the farm, Jar. The truth of the yep. matter is, you weren't the farmer. You're just a slightly larger cow. And now you're learning that. You always thought that you were, what was the word you used? An anti-lol cow? You're not. Anybody is a lol cow. And I hate having to use that term because that is a term that takes away any nuance at any part of somebody's humanity and reduces them to a bunch of goofy things. But anybody can be one jar if enough microscope is put on them. You, me, your parents, your pastor, if you had one, you need one, and a whole slew of other things. That's all that matters. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to start treating people like people because jar, you don't. Because you don't even treat me like a person. And let's be go ahead and tan be completely on board here. While you have done me some favors that I did appreciate, I have done more for you than just about any other person you can name, save maybe Dreadlock, because he's your roommate. 
I have gone to bat for you. I have gotten... Um, I've, um, I have gotten in calls with other creators to help you out because you were trying to resolve conflicts with them without it blowing up. I do all these things for you, not because I want a bigger YouTuber to owe me, I don't care, but because I thought at the time it was the right thing to do. I to know, a point, maybe and... I should, but I'm not done because I need to get here. And then all the stuff with me happens. And you know what? I can understand people wanting to make some distance from me if I'm in hot water to a point. I get it. Jar, me being quote-unquote cancelled does not mean I am dead. Does not mean you couldn't ask my opinion things. Doesn't mean you can't, you can't ask my thoughts. So, my irritation with this is, number one, the only reason you're doing this series of videos is because two other YouTubers gave you grief and pushed you into it. And you admitted that. You admitted Wait. to me when you were Wait. talking... Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who, who were the two YouTubers? Yep, yep. I, I, um, I think it's... But yeah, uh, they, and here's the thing, uh, I do, in my script, I'm not making a video on you anymore, I'm done with drama, um, be in the script, I did go into detail defending you from the, uh, what do you call it, uh, the Barbie call, I did defend you in that part, I did start off the video by saying, like, He's done, this is, I also went through my experiences with you, and I said, I have had nothing but good experiences with a guy. It's what you did to other people that I wanted to go over, but I kept on having cold feet about it, just like I did with other drama videos, and I realize now that... I, I should have stuck to my word when I said I was done with drama and just focused on media criticism. I shouldn't have talked about Seth or Daft or Spockter. Look, talk, and, hold on. Talking about Seth or Spockter in and themselves makes sense. Because I don't consider those things to be drama. Those are important things communities need to know. That's fine. The problem is, Jar, you take you take your issues with other people, and I've been accused of this too. I think it's not as not as inherently accurate. But you take like smaller issues you have, like with Susie, and you blow it all the way up because you have a grudge against these people. Jar, I've said this before, I'll say it again. You need to go to therapy. Not just for the paranoia you have, but also for your genuine anger issues. I know. Uh, my roommate has told me multiple times that I need therapy, and I just can't afford it right now. That's but fine. I do. But again, I'm going to... Go ahead. Every time I go to bed and I'm about to fall asleep... I just feel angry about sometimes things that has have happened 10 years ago. And sometimes I feel like revenge is the only thing that keeps me going. And what I did was so with, was so stupid. I mostly just wanted someone in my corner because you peaches was gone. You were, your reputation wasn't really that great at all. It was kind of in the dirt and when me, it was me, you, and Peaches, I felt like we were invincible together. Like, I felt like we were the three musketeers. Jar, me being canceled, me being in the dirt, does not mean you could not ask for my opinion on something. Because here's a kicker, Beckett did. Other people came to me asking, and I didn't get involved. Other than Who's a couple... Beckett? Beckett runs a podcast called the Cope and Seed Podcast. And he's one person. You I know. Need to, okay, no, I know who did that. Is. You need to talk to him because he's going to be fair to you. He might ri he might razz you, but he'll be fair because he's been fair to me. And Lord knows we have had some arguments. Another person you need to talk to, and you're going to hate this jar. You're really going to hate this. You need to talk to Kumo. If for no other reason than to at least give him your side of some things that are coming. Flatly. And if you don't heed that, if you don't heed that advice, I can't stop you from being dumb. Because here's the other thing. You sit here and you send me this absurd message. I wish you didn't get canceled. You would have stopped me. Jar, are you familiar with the Lazarus and the rich man? That parable? No. Uh, okay. it, it, maybe if you start it, it will jog my memory. There, Jesus told a parable about a poor man named Lazarus who was covered in boils and leprosy. I can't remember the exact ailment, but he had to beg every day at the gates. He had dogs having to lick his wounds, and he was just an unfortunate person. And there was a man very wealthy, about I town, know. everybody loved him. I, where, did Lazarus, where, I, where did the rich man wind up, Jar? He ended up in hell. Um, and what, warn my brothers, they do not know what is coming. And how did Abraham respond? Um, 
if they won't listen to uh if they won't listen to, um I forgot it was if they won't listen it's something like that. I know it something to do with listening. They have the scriptures and the prophets. Even if a man from the dead came back and told them it would do no good. Jar, you had your girlfriend, who we are not going to name because she wants to remain anonymous, and I will respect that. And your Thank you. and your roommate tell you, Jar, do not upload this. If my wife told me do not upload a video, I don't care who's clamoring for it. That ain't happening. You ignored them. What makes you think you would have listened to me? Because Lord knows you haven't. Because the moment we stopped communicating regularly and I wasn't being your Jiminy Cricket, you went right back to doing all the dumb things I told you not to do. Yes, I... Give me a second. All right. Sorry, I'm just so slow because I haven't eaten, eaten pretty much eaten anything. I've just, need if I eat anything, I will. I know, it's just, I have to eat very small things, chew them a lot, because if I don't, my system will go into shock and I'll vomit. Yeah, because you've never had this heavy of a backlash before. Not one that you ever... Mm, well, to be fair, I know this is going to sound dumb, but when the stuff with the Heather pack happened, it actually felt worse because I was so much smaller compared to them. Like now, sure, I can handle that no problem. But back then, it actually felt worse. I, I didn't eat for like two, like like a week or two. Well, that I is think just, the, the sub count doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't no, matter. No, no, no. I, I, know, I, I know. I'm just saying. Like I was so small, and it it felt big. You like felt more vulnerable. Back. You felt more vulnerable. Yeah, it felt like, it felt like more. Yeah, Char, you do that to small content creators all the time, dude. I know. Do you? Because I told you, I told you that even if you're mad at Linlin, and even if you're justified in hearing at Linlin, you turning around and attacking a channel that much smaller than you is never going to make you look good. Never. I know. You know that's, that's why I've been holding off on making it. I was like, I don't want to make it. I don't want to make it. Then don't. And then I, anger, like... I have a reasonable side of me and an angry side of me, and the angry side of me said, do something about it. But I'm glad, and that's why I've been using my second channel to respond to people, because I don't want them to get dunked on that hard. And I, I, I've said, don't attack them. You know I do feel bad when people do get harassment. John, like, you know that. It's not just harassment, dude, because here's the thing. I also, I have a high level of empathy. It's why I get freaking dicked around with so much by terrible people, frankly. But if you're saying, I don't want people to deal with harassment, then you should mitigate it any way you can. These people cannot hurt you, Jar. Because here's the, here's the thing of the matter. If they bring up random things that you didn't do, they can't hurt you with it. You have to have that internal sense of self. I was not joking when I told you, because you asked me, how did I handle backlash? My faith in God, the love of my wife, having one foot, one major foot, in fact, majority of my life, not actually online, but more rooted in the real world, because I was born in 1985, I was almost an adult by the time the internet became a thing. I was already grounded in reality. But the one thing I didn't mention, Jar, because I need to talk about it, and I'm going to segue with it now, I had support from actual friends. People who didn't just want to use me for content. And that's the problem you have, Jar. With the exception of maybe dreadlocks, I don't know if you have friends. Because you certainly didn't treat me like one. Period. You have a well, tendency of waiting until you see how things are going to play out before you jump into something. You don't treat people like people, and you don't treat your friends like friends. Well, come on. I, I helped Peaches out a lot. Like, yes, you did. I, I, didn't even, I didn't have a, a grudge with Camilla or uh, Evrona. I didn't have any beef with them. I'm aware, Jar. The one example of you doing the right thing when you have made it a history at this point, specifically with me and with other people, to use them more as a tool on your belt than an actual person is a problem. Because you know what? There's a lot of people on the spectrum I didn't yell out and I didn't sit there and, and treat like garbage, but they're still Rosa. I know. And regardless of what Rosa's doing now, which is another issue in and of itself, I'm not going to go after Rosa. I learned from that. Even before it became a big thing, I had altered what I do. Every human being, with the exception of people who prey on children, and I need you to remember that one, has a right to change. 
And I I did, when I say right to change, I don't mean as in an internal right. They have just plain a right to change. That includes you. I know, I know. I as you know, I've said this before. The only two things that can get you canceled is pee pee around kids and yourself. Yeah, congratulations, Jar. You pulled that one off. And then, instead of being reasonable, you're, you're sitting here reaching out to other people, hoping they're going to cover your butt. So here's what I'm going to tell you right now. Because wait, wait, wait. Wait, how am I... What do you mean, cover my butt? Like, I'm, I'm confused by what you mean why by would that. You, why would you need to go to... Instead of just oh, sitting no, down and... No, he reached out to me uh, first. And at first, I didn't even want to talk to him because I was like... I was just in such a dark place. I was like, uh, I deserve all this backlash, yada, yada. And then he finally sat down and called me. And he explained to me in a very good way of what I did wrong... And um, he's not making of I um, he's not making a vi he's going to be making a video about the whole Cine me Jack situation when it's all over. But he's not going to help me with my um, apology video. That's going to be on me. And I'm Jar. Here's the problem. Yeah. Your apology yeah. video it is not going to have any value to it. The reason why it's not going to have any value to it because you have gone on record before saying you will revoke apologies. I will what? You said you've gone on record before saying you have revoked apologies. That's well, no. Well, I haven't revoked all of them, but like, wait, what do you mean by that? Actually, what do you mean by that? Where you'll apologize and then later on take back the apology, depending on the situation. If you're going to ask for a specific, I currently don't have one, but that's how the public okay. is going to view it. This, they are expecting you to respond with a very poorly done apology. Because, you know what? You can be angry about Kumo leaking your video all you want. I can understand that would be irritating. But that was still your video. Your choices, your takes, your bad decisions. And you know the thing I find insulting, truly insulting, is that you put your bare butt, figuratively, on display in that call with Cinny, and did you think that people wouldn't notice? I thought about redoing the interview, but then I thought it would be dishonest if I tried to redo it, so I didn't, and people, yeah, people noticed, um, I, I, like, did I think people wouldn't notice? I guess so, because, well, why else would I put it in a video, and... So let me tell you what's going to happen, Jar, since you wanted to know. People are going to dig. I don't know if you've done other things. I hope for your sake you didn't. But if you have, it'll people will find out. They always do and they always will. Now, find out what? I don't know. That's I'm saying I don't know if you have. I'm just telling you people are going to dig, Jar. That's You oh, said it yourself well, earlier. Oh, yeah. People are going to dig in to me. And, I mean, whatever you say, on uh, um, whatever it happens will happen. Yeah. And, yeah. And, uh. And I, I want to be clear about this, too, because I know you immediately gravitated when you saw him getting some boost in here. Akumu's not going to save you. I know. So I really hope you didn't run to him because he's just going to laugh in your face. The you only right thing... To. Okay, the only thing... And I, mind if I send... The only thing I did was... I, I could send you if you need the evidence, but... Go ahead. Um, wait, you want me to send you... Yes, I want you to also send me that draft you've told me about. The first draft on Cine? Yes. I will have to... I will have to snap it together because it's in segments. So right. I will have to snap that together for you. So it might take... And I'm not doing so hot right now. I'm but, aware. uh... Yeah. Let me see. Yeah, I'll snap it together for you. Thank you. I will, but I did... Okay, I looked at my DMs. I didn't say what I thought I said, but yeah, I did ask if Akumu could also make a video on the Cine situation, and he said no, and I was like, yeah, Good. but... 
Mm-hmm. Smart of him to do that. Because here's the truth, Jar, if you had actually paid attention. Because if you had paid I... attention, and if you had talked, if... Because here's the... I didn't want to talk to Kuma for a while either. I had thoughts about him that were not accurate to reality. Because I did not do my due diligence and look more at the evidence because I didn't like who was presenting it and I thought it'd be manipulative but when I did I found a completely different person underneath all of that if you had talked to Kumo properly during all this you would have been able to pick up signs of Sinny's manipulation because the way Sinny acts towards you in that call is completely different than how Sinny acted around Kumo and if you two had talked you would have put two and two together and you wouldn't be in this mess either gonna be blunt about that one you let that person play you Happily, because you thought yeah. big number will have my back. They're never going to have your back, Jar, because these people aren't your friends. These people you're so obsessed with trying to please so they'll be on your side, they don't care about you. Go ahead, run this s- right now. See if they'll bail you out. You know what the response is going to be? They're going to laugh at you. Yes. You need to learn what a friend is, Jar, because you haven't been to a lot of people. I know. I am. I know that there have been times you've been worried about me being angry at you over an action or a bad decision. And you know what? Those times, very rarely was I actually angry with you. With the exception of what happened at VidCon. That made me mad because I didn't know about your back and forth with And you and I had a conversation about that. But what, wow. made, me, what made me really mad is that one video you did earlier in the Sydney one. That actually made me mad out of everything you've done. Save that one incident. That actually made me mad. Disgusted and mad. Mm-hmm. But I'm also not going to sit here and do a big video about Jar because, frankly, Jar, I'm tired. I have been stuck dealing with the literally worst of humanity for how long? Uh, six years now. And it does things to me. It had twisted and warped my perspective on a lot of things. I thought the worst of literally everyone because of all the scummy people I've had run-ins with, had to deal with, and then I had to deal with all the nonsense Peach has put me through. Real fun, by the way. Thanks for, check- Thanks for checking in. Well, I, I did make my video on Peaches, and I waited for your video to come out first. And I, I did tell people to check your video out. Jar. How do I put this? Do we even have any mutual friends now? Let me look here. Because I want to make an example you'll understand. So this isn't a gotcha. Uh, let's see here. Right. There we go. Click on your profile. Okay, let's see here. Who do we have? I don't even know who that person is. Fantastic. Uh, Lorenzo, that's perfect. Let's use Lorenzo. If you, found, if you found out Lorenzo was having a spiral, an ideation spiral, mind you, would you check in on him? Would you ask how he's doing? Wait a second. I mean, what about Misanthropony, a.k.a. Zaid? I let him on my channel. Yeah, and that was when dumb, you... too, and we'll get to that. Oh, if Lorenzo was spiraling, do you consider Lorenzo your friend? Hmm. Yes. If Lorenzo was spiraling, if you saw he was having to deal with some real hard stuff, would you check in on him? Or would you just tell people to check out his eventual video? I think I would tell people. Um, I think I would check in on him. Yeah, that's what friends do, Jar. It's why when Fluffy pulled their stunt with you, and you weren't responding, I freaked out, found your phone number, and called you, because I was worried. You saw that happening, you panicked, and you did something drastic. Because I care. It's, I, also, I why I, it's also why I've done freaking wellness checks for people that hate me and people I don't like, because even though I might beef with some absolute morons, I don't want anything bad like that to happen to them. Save that they trade on children, then I really don't care. Gonna be blunt. But this is ridiculous, Jar. Like, every single ounce of it is. People are The people close to you should be close to you because they care about you. Not use the stepping stones for your uh, progress on YouTube. And I know why you're so defensive of your YouTube channel. Because you had a really rough childhood. Trust me, I understand. I empathize. And now people actually listen to you. You can't be ran out by people like the Heather Pack anymore. And you know what? Good on you for being able to build a platform. Problem is, Jar, you didn't use it as a platform for something valuable and something good. You used your platform 
to attack other people, to make mockeries of them, never once realizing sooner or later that's going to be pointed at you. No, no, uh, I disagree with that. Every time I've done a drama video, I've always thought one day this is going to be me. I've said in a handful of videos that Sorry. I know one day I'm going to get canceled. I Sorry. said it comes for all you of us. Say, I, you I say it, uh, you say it, but you don't believe it. You no, I do. Sorry, I do believe you, it. Then why this would happen one day. Then why'd you do it? Why did you do something so objectively stupid? Because I believed her. I didn't realize I was being manipulated. You know, part of it was her manipulating. I'm not gonna design I'm not gonna deny that. But it wasn't that you be inherently that you believed her, you wanted to believe her. You wanted to have somebody in your back pocket that owed you a favor. Because Another thing, uh, would you do a favor for somebody, Jar? While I understand that your value is reciprocation, and to a point I get that, uh, the favor should not be uh, contractual. I never once said you owe me for anything I did for you, because that's not who I am. I did feel like I owed you, though. I, like, I felt... I, I said, if I'm going to make... When I make my video on Lyle, I'm at least feeling bad about it, because I was. I was going to reach out to you and get your side on a few more things and jar it was a video. can i actually tell you one of the main reasons one okay. of the main reasons why i actually got into drama content go ahead because i knew i was doing something wrong like i was messing up some way when it came to people and I was hoping through drama content, I would have it pointed out to me. And it took a long time, but I think it, it's finally happening. Sure, like, I you, finally... Sure, you've had this behavioral problem pointed out to you so many times, man. So many times I've had calls with you about, don't do this, don't do that, here's how this looks, here's how this affects other people. Sure, you didn't listen. You, you gave me lip service, but you didn't listen, man. And that's the main crux of the problem. You have gotten so large to the point to where it's affecting your ego and you think if somebody isn't my size or larger, I shouldn't have to listen to them. A wise man takes joy in rebuke. A fool closes his ears to it. I've, li I've listened to you though, not, not permanently, but I, I've listened to you. Uh, Jar, I've if it's, what? if it's raining bullets outside or somebody's taking shots, actual physical shots at you and somebody tells you don't go outside you'll get shot but then that person who told you that uh dies or goes away does that mean their their advice to you somehow holds no merit now no it it, it, it what you told me does hold merit you just didn't want to listen to it that i was gone which tells me that you didn't actually think about anything i told you maybe you will now i don't know i don't know if you're going to jar so here's the modicum, the crumb of advice I will give you at this point. Because if nothing else, um, I owe this to your girlfriend who doesn't deserve this and all the nonsense going I'm... on here. Because I know people are trying to find her jar. I know. You better pray That's they don't. Have... I know. I here's... don't want anything bad to happen to her. Here's, what you... here's what you do. Number yeah. one, never, ever do a drama video again period. Whatever you may have planned, dunk it. Drop it. Stick to your media reviews. And only that. Quick question. I do have one drama video that is all finished, and I was thinking of just making it a Patreon exclusive. Do you think I should do that? No. What's the topic? Timos boss. Jar, that dude has no power. His channel is dead. Screw him. I know. It's just he was made multiple videos accusing me of being a pedo over an EDP short I've uploaded, which was a segment from the Spockter video. I, I'm aware, and frankly, some of the things you said in other videos, Jar, like so dog. What you said in that call with Cinny, like why did you even do a video on Spockter? Like, if you didn't think what Spockter did was all that bad, why'd you even do a video on him? Because, he, like, 
you you heard what I said in my video. I was like, please don't run away. Just and, and like and, like talk about the situation around you because and I'm not saying what he did wasn't bad. I'm just saying we didn't have confirmation on it, and he never. And he just ran away, and I was like, oh my god, he, he could have defended himself. Why didn't he? Because we did have confirmation, Jar. He admitted it in a call that was recorded without his knowledge, with friends yes, he knew would yes, back him up. Yes, yes, he admitted to having the drive, but we don't know if he held on to it or just forgot about it. We, we don't know the context around it. That's Jar, do you trust him to be honest? No, that's why I brought that up in my video. Well, thank you that, that it's irrelevant. Jar, you look at everything through the lens of whether or not they're going to remain as a content creator. Life isn't always about that. Spotter should be gone. And at this point, I wasn't months ago, so should Peaches. And no, you shouldn't upload that video to your patrons. I'm surprised you still have any right now, honestly. Uh, I haven't checked. Um, who knows? I, I probably don't have any. Or maybe half of them are gone. I mean... Look at Spoonie one. He has five, he had so many that he still has some even to this day, uh, because they just keep it on auto. Well, since we're talking about failed content creators, now we're going to talk about Misanthropony. Mm-hmm. You're aware that I spent over a year, over a year, working with him and trying to get him to stop being stupid. Yes. Yes. Did I succeed? No. Why didn't I succeed, Jar? Because you, uh... Was it my fault? No, it wasn't your fault. W why didn't you succeed? Because you can't sit there and actually contain his stupidity. You cannot convince him to stop being unhinged. And Jar, you don't watch people the same way I have to. You don't actually make them your priority. You don't make them your responsibility. I promise you, I can almost guarantee you, he is currently being unhinged in somebody's DMs, wishing that the mob guns them down in the streets because this person lied about me. This person was mean about me. And frankly... You're not going to contain him. And when people came to me saying, did you know Jar's doing this? You know what my response to that was, Jar? What? When it blows up in his face, he'll learn. Because it will. And on top of that, Jar, you cannot sit here and try to convince people that you're not transphobic or any of this other stuff when you let this moron upload a video called, what, uh, seven, what was it, seven something in the seven they thems? Or snow something in the seven they thems? Like, are you out of your mind? Uh, let me look up the title. Uh, what was the title of it? I, it was set. It was Snow Something and the Seven They Them. It's on your community tab. Mm hmm. I think it was Snow Tan and the Seven They Them. I've heard other people make that joke. Jar. I heard people make rape jokes all the time too. I hear people make Nazi jokes all the time too. You know what I don't do? I don't repeat them. And if I'm sitting here saying I find this thing uh, repulsive or repugnant, I probably shouldn't be doing it. Because then mm -hmm. what are my values? They're worthless. Air. Nothing. That's going to blow up in your face. Because everybody's tried helping him. I tried helping him. Sarah I, tried helping I, him. Go ahead. I've heard trans people make similar jokes about the movie, though. Jar, they can, and that's their right to do so. But you need to recognize not every person can say every joke. Especially, even if you're talking about from a punchline perspective. Okay? Not everybody can. I don't know if this is a thing with, with you being on the spectrum, but no. I, if I sit here and I use the hard R N-word, I can't sit there and justify that, even though I'm Hispanic, by saying, well, the black people do it. What? What? No. I'm. I'm sorry. It's not me. You need to apologize to Jar. As a matter of fact, I don't I think know. you need to apologize to anybody. I think you need to do one of two things: actually change, or just own what you are, and stop pretending to be something else. I know. Which one you do is up to you. But you trying to take on somebody like Miss Anthropony, somebody you know is divisive, somebody you know has done enough to where, Jar, I'm one of the dumbest people when it comes to giving people chances. You know this, you've seen this. I kicked him out of my spaces. I stopped communicating with him. I removed him from my life because he is that volatile. And you think you can handle him? Jar, you've had to come to me to handle disputes between you and your roommate. Are you kidding me? 
Well, it was one dispute, but yeah. Twice. Because um, you tried to get me onto another one, and I rejected it because I'm not getting that yeah. invested in your personal life. Because that's I, just I, I, weird. The, my, point I, I is, my point is, Jar, if I couldn't handle it, and I'm the moron who was dumb enough to give some person who was taking complete advantage of me 8K, which, by the way, I know you told Akumu about before my video came out. Thanks, buddy. Uh, I've dropped them. And you think you can handle them. Jar, you couldn't lead ants to a picnic. Stay in your lane, know your role. I, I think... I think a lot of it... I think a lot of this has to do with my upbringing, and I will try to uh, actually so, no no I, I don't know what i'm saying you're right because I, there's there's a certain point in time jar you can't always sit there and say my upbringing you know what? my upbringing screwed me up too jar it screwed me up I to know. the point to where that's i why, won't sit that's why I I know, i'm finishing i'm finishing because you need to hear this there my upbringing taught me to make sure when i'm in a restaurant to make sure my back is against the wall and i can see the exit because i was raised by a vietnam vet who had a level of paranoia that makes yours look like a little girl worried that her crush doesn't like her. Dead serious. Yeah. Like, I... you're, you're, you're almost in your 30s now, Jar. Like, I'm not going to sit here and, and dog on you for a bad childhood. I get it. I have literally gone to bat for you. To the chagrin I'm... of my actual friends and the chagrin of people who were around you to explain, I know Jar was homeschooled. Here's what he struggled with. I know he comes from an abusive home. I understand it. Here's what he struggles with. Susie told you to your face that I have been I know. running defense for you. I know, I know. I was actually just about to bring that up. And then Susie, you, Susie, and uh, no, let, let me let me do something. I, right I just, I thought I understood people. I really, I how really did. You don't treat them like people. You don't actually talk to them unless you want something. That's not understanding people, Jar. And let me go ahead and make this clear to you. That dumb video you did about Susie, which frankly, gonna be blunt, I think you need a private, because it embarrasses you too. Not, because here's the thing, you were also in the FCK, and there's no way to prove you didn't see what was in there, Jar. You may have only made two posts, that doesn't mean you didn't see it. Secondly, there is a vast difference in terms of intent between a bunch of stupid adults who will not mind themselves around children and doing what Key and Tippy did, knowing a fr person who was a friend of an actual child predator and attempted rapist was in spaces with children, feeding this person these children, and said nothing. The only reason we found out about the grooming that happened in the FCK is because victims came out, because it didn't happen in the server jar. It was a dumb comparison. I don't know who you got it from, but you should have returned it before the date was up. And then you have the audacity, and I know your, your excuse is going to be, it was cheaper, to put up that asinine thumbnail? Are you kidding me? Uh, yeah. I, I know. You have been egregiously foolish. You have ignored people's boundaries. You have consistently put your foot in your mouth. And I have been there, the idiot trying to make people understand you because I thought there was something there. And there might still be, Jar. But you have made a fool of yourself, a spectacle of your platform. And as insane as some of your fans can be, oh God, you better hope they don't. Just gonna say that I, right now. I don't think it's gonna be my fans doing this, but yeah. Oh, buddy. Hey, guess, guess what? Who killed John Lennon? John, John, I, I... I actually a, don't know. I don't know. He was a hardcore that. fan of John Lennon right before he did it. He was? Yeah. Mm. So was the person who killed Selena. Ran her fan club! Killed her. Well, I'm not, I'm not as big as those people. I'm not John Lennon big. Jar, it's, not, it's not a matter of your size, Jar. It's a matter of their insanity. It's a matter of their inability to not act right. That what I'm getting at, Jar, is you do not sit there and actually, actually think through the impact of your stuff. I know. That's, and you know what? I'm, I've, had, I'm, I'm, I've I'm trying. I'm, I've actually. I know this is going to sound surprising. I've actually gotten better. I'm not going to deny that, Jar. 
You have gotten better. But this is an absolute dumpster fire of your own creation by your own hubris because you thought a larger creator would owe you one. I have told you this before. When you tried or thought about doing a video defending Kai Weiss, there are better people to help. I know, but I should say this. Uh, I did also defend Mari during the Mari and Cal drama, and Mari was not a big creator, and I was going up against Izzy Izzy and Prison Mate Luke. Like, you know what, Jar? I, I defended that, a lot. That was not, huh? I defended a lot of people. I filed a lot of reports against predators. Yeah. I, have, I have messed with people to get them offline directly in call because they are harassing people. It does not remove what I did to Rosa. I, I know. What I'm just trying to say is people, you're painting this as I always do it as a stepping stone. There was no nothing to gain by helping Mari aside from making fun of Prismate Luke a little more. But like there was other videos like this video on Mini Lad that I could have, wait, was it Mini Lad? No, it wasn't Mini Lad. It was, uh, I forgot what the creator was, but it was some big creator and I could have gone over that video. I forgot which one. It was, it was kind of long ago. Jar. The point is, even if that is an outlier, you still have a pattern of behavior that you need to have actually addressed, not given lip service to, not feigning about, actually address. Right now, you need to take your licks. You need to take the fact that you are going to be a laughing stock. Because here's the thing, I know you wanted to make good with a lot of these people. I know you wanted to, you know, wind up in their circles eventually. Jar, these people don't care about you. Every single, every single commentary person sitting here laughing at you, they couldn't care less if you die tomorrow. Genuinely. In fact, they'd probably stream about it and make fun of you for doing it. Gonna be blunt. Because you need that. That's what's gonna happen. Take, I know. The, take your whippings. Take your whoopings. Take I am, everything. I, am. I, haven't, I haven't fought back yet. I mean, I'm not, like, I'm, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm being, not, I'm being direct here. Like, I'm getting I'm somewhere. I'm not gonna end up like Bo Blacks. I, I don't care about Bo Blacks. I don't. And I know what you're saying, but you can't also coach everything in what happened to other people. Because, Jar, you were thoroughly convinced in your video that you were going to come out on top because you had a feeling about the peaches, you had a feeling about the spot drawing. Look at you now. Jar, those ate so doggone poorly. It just took a matter of time before people found out what these people were. Peaches didn't turn evil after your video on her. She already was. She just didn't have somebody she could exploit to the way she did me. You don't even have a clue of everything I went through. You didn't even ask. Well, I did watch your video. Jar, do you think I put everything in that video? With how long that video was, kind of. You really think I fit two years worth of abuse in that video? Well, not fully two years. I mean, you did tell me some stuff, like how some you things. spent... Huh? I told you some things, Jar. A friend asks and tries to understand. I have had some people from the community you think is terrible, and you know, for a while I did too, because of how some of them reacted to me initially when things started coming out. But I've had some people from that community that you hate so much actually ask about me and check in and see where I'm at in all this. But you, the guy I went to bat for, the guy I constantly defended everywhere, even trying to intercept other creators messing with you for your benefit, because I cared about you, you didn't. You are the only person, Jar, who in, and you did the next day, to your credit, but in the messages, when Peaches pulled their stunt, I literally told you, kind of want to die. You didn't think that was indicative of anything? Because I was supposed to be your friend. I thought I was. Clearly not. Clearly I'm just a tool to be used whenever you get in hot water. I have had to learn a lot of things the past few months, Jar, one of which is I, I am somehow a dickhead. I tried, though. Did you? I tried. I tried when it came to Akumu and Kai to get you to sit down, and I was going to be the middleman with you two. And I, I was I with Akumu. And I don't care about I, Kai. I, I, be, being a middleman is not the same thing as being a friend, Jar. To me, I, I think it was being a friend because you've done the. I told you, you've done it for me so many times. I wanted to do the same for you. Jar, I've done a lot of other things for you too. You need to figure out what a friend actually is, because you actually don't know. And I don't know whether or not that makes me angry or makes me pity you more. 
But what I have learned about myself in the past several months is that I am somehow both a dickhead sometimes, but also a complete doormat, and that I will absolutely be a people pleaser, and I need to figure out where that balance is in my life. Here's what you need to do. You need to get that stupid first draft together, and out of curiosity, and you don't have to do this one, but I'm just curious. Send your script about me, because I'm curious what you say. And you need to hard think, and I really think you just need to send me that cine call. Because if nothing else, I can at least tell people whether or not the accusations are accurate, because they will at least listen to what I'm saying at this point. What are the accusations I hit on her? That, in the, that you oh. hit on her, that you flirted with her. You coming out saying no you didn't doesn't mean anything, Jar. And your girlfriend's not about to come out publicly and say it either, and she doesn't need to. Uh. And you need to talk to Kumo, and you need to talk to Beckett. Wait, who's Beckett? Oh, oh, oh uh, Copen Thitsi. Thitsi. Yes. That guy. That guy. Took me a second. Yeah. Um... I'll give you his Discord handle. Thank you. You can be angry at Kumo for leaking your video if you want. Frankly, I think that, like, whatever issue I might have with that initial thing aside, uh, that video made me so mad. I'm not even going to sit here and hold that against him. You will. You do what you want. I'm not going to. I know the name's kind of weird, but that is, in fact, his screen name. Send him a friend request. Figure a time to talk. Whether it's publicly or privately, that's between you two. But I need to make one thing very clear here, Jar. Very, very clear. I have put it the was Go ahead. I, I just want to make it clear. That was a draft of the video, not the final video. That's Jar. why I'm going to send you another draft. It was... I really thought I had something, and I... Okay, let me make this clear then. You heard about my first draft getting leaked about my response, right? Of course you did. Yes. When that got leaked, did I just magically put out a poorly edited video with the exact same stuff in that? Or did I do a completely different video at the end of it because that was just a rough draft? I panicked. Yeah, th that doesn't change the fact because I asked you when this call began. The final video, was it going to be essentially the same? And you said yes. No, no, I said if no one told me there was an issue with it. Like, and here's the thing. I highly doubt if when once my roommate came home, because you know I'm dyslexic, and we went through the call the logs very carefully, I highly doubt doubted that that would happen. I'm and sorry. you already said that both your girlfriend and your roommate told you not to upload that video. They they told me that as in they don't want to see me go through something like fight for so long again. Okay. But maybe they meant something else, and I didn't pick up on it. Either way, I don't when, know. Your when your partner says, please don't do this, what do you think that communicates, Jar? It means please don't I do it. I shouldn't do it. And frankly, if you had it, actually had the intelligence to come to me, my response to you would have been, don't touch it. It's freaking radioactive. Because no Because you know, here's the thing I will, give a, I will give Kumo. I think Kumo came at this honestly with good intentions. He may have screwed up. He may have gotten played, but you know what? He's taking his L and he's learning from it. Because unfortunately, like me, he has a bad habit. Well, actually, it's not him. That's not his fault. But because he's high in empathy in ways you wouldn't expect, people can dick with him. And he'll learn from it. He's young. He knew when to cut that cord. You didn't. I, this I know. Is, I, I hope you this do. Is by, this is by far the stupidest thing I've ever done. Yeah. I can absolutely attest to that in terms of your video content. Absolutely. And you're going to get backlash for it. No. I'm, I, I know. I know. And I know it's going to get worse. Like, you it, told, it already... You told me, when I was dealing with my stuff, what Tricky Tom did with the pyrocynical stuff. He got a whole bunch of content together, and he just started unloading it at decent intervals where he just couldn't get ratioed on it. Take your own advice. I, I know that's that's what I plan. I, I either plan to do that or just reinvent myself like Kraut. I figure out what you're going to do. I know. Because I'm here's here's where I, I am, have to get I am, off. Here's where I have to okay. Get off. Until in the future, not soon in the future, you have proven that you're not going to be what you have been for the past few years. Unless an emergency happens, you and I aren't going to be talking. 
I can't let people continue to use me and I can't continue to have my, you in my life if you pull stunts like this out of freaking nowhere because you thought you'd have somebody on your side. That's not acceptable and that's not okay. I am putting that barrier up now. I have been there for you. I have done it for years now. You didn't even have the decency to come to me about this because I was, and I quote, canceled, which means somehow my information means nothing. That is not treating me like a friend, you're that's treating me like an asset, and I do not appreciate it. I had peaches do that to me for two years. And you're not saying just, you like peaches. I'm not saying you like peaches. I want to be clear. Okay. I'm just saying I dealt with something like that. I don't want to do it again. I know. I, I just thought after seeing all the videos on you that maybe you, uh, after seeing all the videos on you, Jordan, I just you think, thought you just thought what? Maybe you weren't maybe you weren't a guy to go to for advice anymore because it was so much. And I was going to say certain things like I don't think he's lying about a lot of this. I think he's just misinformed. Jar. If a plumber gets fired, does yeah. that mean they don't know how to set a toilet anymore? Well, if he got fired for failing to set toilets right, then I guess so. I didn't get quote-unquote canceled because I didn't take advice. I got canceled because I made some really stupid decisions. Fueled by whatever you can say, whatever makes you feel better about the decision. I made bad decisions. The difference is I ate them and I owned them. And are not things I'm ever going to repeat again. Especially now that I'm on medication. And trying still to find a decent therapist. But I can't seem to find one yet. But I will eventually. I'm not going to stop trying. That doesn't magically mean that the information and experience I have somehow doesn't exist. Because again, was... Beckett was one of the people who was doing streams about me and talking trash about me. Even he came to me asking my opinion on this stuff. Even he did. And you know what I told him? It's freaking radioactive. Don't touch it. Wait, your, your situation was radioactive, don't touch it? No, when he came to me about the oh. Cine stuff. Oh, okay. I just... I just didn't... Just, you know I've also been used before, and you know... Yes, I've been used before, too, and uh -huh. I have a hard time understanding people because just everything then you need to not only go to therapy you need to start doing some social events in your city and there's plenty of them in fact since since you like tinkering with stuff me and my roommate have been planning to go to certain more social events i used to go to a bar every saturday or sunday um but financial problems started happening so we stopped going and I think it would have been good if I kept on going and Yes, but at the same time, Jar, you also need to socialize with people who are a little bit more like you. And nerds are like I... you. And again, it's filled with nerds. I and, know, and, I'm just... And that means when you trip up socially, they're also going to be a lot more accepting of it and not trying to tear you to pieces. You dick up too hard at a bar, you wind up with your face through glass. My roommate has been trying to drag me into social events now that he has his um now that he has his uh good job and you know i i think i'll take him up on that offer but i'm just afraid i might ruin his friendships because then then don't then don't go to specifically his friends find your own friends in your own friend group you can explore that you need time offline jar because the online stuff is so deep-rooted in your skull that you can't get it out. I can shut I, off things and walk away. You can't. I I know, I know. Like, luckily, I have been doing that. I haven't checked Twitter. I've been a, on an alt-YouTube account when I watch stuff. Um, Good. And I, I haven't been rushing my apology video. I've been just slowly working on it bit by bit because I don't... I don't want it to sound like I'm... I don't want it to sound like I'm just apologizing for the sake of apologizing. I don't want it. I want. I know I fucked up. You need time. Time offline. 
time in social situations, all of that. I think you're right. I know I'm right. I... I've seen this because you know what? I didn't jump immediately back into drama. I made some dumb calls. Not going to deny that. I made some real dumb calls. Shouldn't have done that. But not being in that jar, not being in that paranoid headspace, not having to deal with a bunch of deranged nonsense every day has helped me a lot. In fact, this call with you is the most heated I've been in a call in months. My channel right now, I'm putting out daily reviews of freaking Transformers. And it's a lot of fun and people are watching them and enjoying them. That makes me happy. I know. Go do something with yourself. Actually something with yourself. Take your lips. Deal with the things that are going to come at you because they will. Because that's just how reality works online. And then do what you need to do if you survive it. Take your break. But talk to the people I told you to. Okay, but I do need to make my apology video and gather evidence and everything. Well, I am going to be on record strongly advising against it. But you do what you feel. You don't think I should apologize? I think that your apology right now is going to look extremely disingenuous. I think people are going to look at it and they're just going to mock you for it. They're not going to take it seriously. They're going to see it as Jar got blown out, so now Jar's apologizing. This isn't genuine. He's just mad he got caught. I promise you that's going to be the reception. I promise you that. But you do what you feel you need to. I I'm know. Not, I don't... I'm not going to bail you I out don't, any further. Okay. I, I don't blame you. I just... I mostly want to make it because, like, I want people to know uh, that how I messed up, what my thought process was, and, um... Okay, so I'm going to wrap up. Uh, but Go ahead. Wait, wait, can I just... Go ahead. I just want to say that um, I just felt like what Cindy was going through was something similar to what I went through and that was the main thing that lapsed in my judgment but I think it would be good if whatever false information I spread about the Cindy situation I could correct in my apology video and just go over some of the new stuff too John, because I don't because some yeah. people were convinced about my video and I would like to set the record straight I, I do not know how in the depth of your ignorance you could look at the stuff that happened with Cindy and think this is like my situation nothing was fabricated against Cindy has some of the things that happened been kind of sus uh, handled very poorly absolutely but you're also dealing with people who are genuinely online without any actual social skills and treat everything like it's gossip like you can sit here and you can internally think about that but there are sometimes you have to keep things inside and some things you have to keep outside I don't know how you looked at a person who is in their 20s literally sending a 14-year-old pornography and talking about their kinks and said, I need to defend this person. What were you thinking? Matter of fact, I don't, I don't need to know because we're going to get back into a tangent. Jar, dumb. Very dumb. There, there have always been better people to help, Jar. So I'm going to just recap this and make this very clear. Here's what I need from you. I need, because you offered it, I would like the, un, I would like the first draft. I would like... You to pass me the unedited call between you and Cinny. I would, out of my own curiosity, you ain't got to do this one. I'm curious about your video on me if you want to pass me the script. And you need to talk to Kumo. You need to talk to Beckett. And for the love of God, don't platform misanthropony if you have a brain. That man needs to live in reality for a good long time. Get your priorities right. Because I'm not going to bail you out anymore. I know. I'm not going to block you. I'm not going to do any of that. But I'm, unless an emergency of some sort comes up and there is no one else you can turn to, I'm done. Uh, well, I, I want you to know I'm not, I'm not suicidal over this. Like, I, not, I feel bad, but I'm, I'm not suicidal over this. Look, if you are, your girlfriend will handle it. Okay? okay. I get that. I'm talking about if something externally happens. I'm just saying the okay. communication's open. But I'm not going to bail you out of nothing. I'm not going to run to your rescue. You make your own bed, you start laying in them. I think I've done enough oh. to help you, frankly. I, I think you did as well. 
Um, I'm going to, uh, I'm, I'm probably just going to go for a drive and think things over. If you, if your call got corrupted in any way, hit me up and, and I'll, I'll send you my call. Okay. Thank you for your time, Jordan. All right. Good Have night. a good day. And that was the call. You can draw whatever conclusions you feel you need to from it. I want to also take note of something Jar said in his unedited call with Cinny, though. But yeah, like, Lyo, I'm going to have to talk to him, too, because I want to get his thoughts on a few things, but, like... Oh, yeah, he's like, he's like, he, I fucking saw, he made, like, a post saying, Hey, uh, I heard that Cinny was scamming people. Um, if you didn't get your commission, I'll, I'll draw something for you. And it's like, what? Who fucking wants that? Yeah, it's like, Lyo, you're not, you're not as beloved as you used to be. People know. I paid for Cine Barrow 3 art and I got Lyle Convoy art. Yeah, he, he drew one of my thumbnails for me and it did not go well. But to be fair, I was that wasn't a very good video of mine. I was just going through. Gee, thanks. I didn't make that offer because I thought I was beloved. I did it because I didn't want people to think they'd get nothing from money they gave to somebody. I was trying to help in the only way I felt I could. Deriding that as well as my art itself was uncalled for and hurtful. My art may not be the best in the world, but all I was trying to do is help people. It is what it is, though. For people here who may be skeptical of all this and think this is some attempt for me to come back into a space and talk about drama of this nature, no. I might eventually, but not right now. I don't know when or if I will. But if I do, my focus will remain where I've always intended it to be. To help people. Not to do backroom politics and clandestine behavior that I've done in the past, both Peaches and Jar further normalized and enabled to me. I'm tired of being a cudgel for cruel people who just want to use my reputation or sternness as a weapon, taking advantage of the fact that I want to help and twisting it into just a tool to hurt or intimidate other people. And I mean that, by the way. I've recently discovered that Jar would sometimes use me to threaten other people behind the scenes directly. While I don't mind the right kind of people being afraid of me, that's not who these people were. As I said at the beginning, Jar used me as a mediator for multiple calls. I haven't had the chance to go over those calls, but I feel I need to. I'm hoping those creators didn't feel a need to patch things up with Jar just because I was someone they respected or didn't want to cross. If that was the case, I'd like to apologize to those people. I'd like to do it directly as well, but I don't know who all is even willing to speak to me at this point. I can only hope and pray that my closeness to Jar didn't stop people he truly hurt from coming forward. That would devastate me. I never want to be in the hindrance to someone coming forward with a real issue. I've made my server a safe and comfortable place for people to speak about how they feel about Jar and how he's affected them. You're welcome to join if you want. I've had several people tell me I need to be more open with my feelings on things. Well, other than anger at least. That may be what people know me for the most, but it's not the entirety of my being, and I'm discovering more and more where the anger I have is coming from, and I'm working to control it to be more reasonable. That's why despite my sternness and the call and my slightly raised voice, I never yelled at him in the way I would have a year or two ago. It's not an indication that I'm not angry with him, but that I'm learning better ways to express that anger without devolving into screaming at someone. I should raise the quality of the words in my arguments, not my voice. I know that was a lot to go into, but I'm doing so in order to fully express why I'm about to say what I am. Jar's friendship with me was one-sided, and only in the sense of if he needed something. This is unfortunately a pattern of behavior for Jar and other people when it comes to me. I always want to help people because I know what it's like to have no one in your corner, so I figured while I'm still alive I could at least do that much, sometimes at a point of my own detriment. The transactional nature of friendships with people like Jar, Peaches, and others has done little more than wear me out emotionally, physically, and mentally. And I'm not going to lie, it's hurtful. With all the stuff I've done for Jar, he was never actually there for me. It was a friendship built on what I could give to someone else, and nothing more. To be clear, I don't see friendship as transactional myself. I do things for people because it's the right thing to do. But when the person you think you're friends with doesn't even do the bare minimum and check in on you when things are rough, or only waits until all the things have been said to pick sides with no loyalty or care, then that's not really a friend. Jar's actions in this situation, and many others, aren't defendable, if any of them ever truly were. I'm hoping that unless something truly horrific comes out, that he learns some humility, finds a therapist, and changes. It's all any of us can really hope for. 
Some of you are probably going to ask what I think about Kumo's actions and all of this. While I think Kumo's decisions weren't really the best, I think his intent was far more understandable than Jar's. Jar just wanted a larger channel to owe him a favor. It should also be kept in mind that Kumo is younger and just starting out in this space. He's going to make bad decisions or act in manners we don't care for. Even with that though, I'm going to ask people to also give Kumo the chance to learn and grow, even if he screws up. I didn't give Kumo the chance I should have almost two years ago, and did damage to his reputation and mental well-being that I wouldn't have if I stood up to Peaches and did my due diligence. So please don't use the cutting incident against him. There's more to that situation that I'll be covering on a future video to correct all of that. I've been enjoying my time away from the content creation space in the drama sphere. I've focused on my toy reviews, and it seems people really enjoy watching the daily Transformer shorts I've been putting out this month. That I'm happy for. We'll see what the future brings. If you like the model I built in this video, the link's in the description. Everything is just really sad right now, and I'm hoping it gets better. Take care.